everyone, welcome to the Hedgehog Hollow. So today we're looking at the Ultra New Alcohol Markers. And again, we have a viewer requested video. So as I always say, if you have a request for a video, drop them in the comments below. We do read every single comment. We can't always reply to them, but we would love to know what you would like to see here at the Hedgehog Hollow. So today I'm gonna to be showing you some tips, some tricks, talking about the coding system on the top of the markers, and also kind of just going through um, some tips of working with them and some of my favorite things about them. So first of all, let's talk about how the markers come. So there is a colorless blender. I'll get to my rant about colorless blenders later. If you've watched my other alcohol ink uh, tutorials, you'll know all about the colorless blenders. You can check out my entire playlist all about alcohol markers and my skill builder program in the top right hand corner. Um, there's lots of videos there, lots of tips, tricks, tutorials, all those fun things. Um, but the markers themselves, they come in sets and you can buy them individually to uh, trios, those kinds of things, but I like to buy the sets. They are kind of curated to go together. So you can get a set A, a set B, set C, set D and set E. And then there is a primary essential set. Now, if you have all of the sets A to E, you will get some duplicates by having the primary essentials set. Um, so if you're looking for just one set to be able to color a variety of different things, so you want a couple of greens, a couple of pinks, those kinds of things, then go with the primary essentials. If you want all of the colors, you wanna get the A to E's. That's kind of how it works. You can also go on the Ulta New website and you can get these swatches. Um, and these tell you the um, color. So you've got R400, which is the alcohol marker, and that is equivalent to their blush ink. And you can get this pre-filled out, or you can just do what I did here, which is the printed version, because I wasn't going to start swatching all of them myself. And it was just a really handy reference guide for me to have. So you can go and print those out off the Alter New website. Of course, as always, I will link everything I show you in the video description. But I do want to print, uh, sorry, stamp something out for us to color in. Um, I decided I was going to use a Picket Studios um, stamp that I haven't used yet because I'm on a mission to ink every stamp that I own. It's a tough mission to have, but we're gonna do it. So I'm gonna use my sticky grid trick and I'm gonna be doing it with background stamps. If you haven't seen that trick, again, check it out in the top right hand corner with kind of sticky grid part two. This is my mission to not use magnets in my Misty. Um, this is called a Nenium African Succulent Stamp. It's just really, really pretty. But you can use my sticky grid trick with large background stamps. And this is how. So basically you use the other side of your mouse pad or your felt or your foam rather. And then we use the small piece of sticky grid like this. Pop your cardstock down. Now when I'm coloring with alcohol markers, I like to use the tonic um, ultra smooth white uh, paper. And the reason I like to use that paper is because it has a little bit of a coating that gives you a really nice blend with your alcohol marker. We're gonna use this succulent. I'm gonna have it slightly off the edge like this. I'm gonna pick it up with our misty lid. And you can see how that sticky grid holds it in place nicely. We can just pop that back there. And then I'm gonna use my Gina K Amalgam ink, which is my favorite ink for working with alcohol markers. So we'll ink everything up here. It's also my favorite ink for working with watercolors, for working with pretty much everything. Um, it's just a really nice ink and it's a hybrid ink, so we can use it with all sorts. And of course, this still gives me the flexibility of using my Misty to re-ink any areas that don't get that crisp image that we want. So again, just a nice press all over. And a smidge more in this bottom corner, and then we should be there. And then I'm gonna give you some of my tips for coloring. As I said, I'm gonna go through kind of the numbering system that they use, um, and I'm gonna go through a couple of other things that I want to share with you as well. There we go. So now we have our image stamped out. I can remove my sticky grid off the bottom, and it's ready for next time. So, 
Clean up wise, I will clean this up afterwards, but this just wipes off of my easy clean mat and then clean up my succulent with my stamp cleaner. So let's talk about the markers themselves. So they come in these packages. They'll come shrink wrapped because I've used mine. So unwrapped inside of your shrink wrap. They then also have these little cases. Now I like to keep them in their cases. You don't have to, you could mix and match them. But because I do a lot of videos and things, I like to keep, okay, so this set is my D set. So if I use my Ds, I can make sure I link up set D in the video description for you because I think that just makes it easier. They also come and they have this perforation piece on the side here. And literally all you do, and that's the flap that goes over the top to keep them sealed, literally you just bend it one way and the other and it comes off so easily it also gives you nice easy access into the box so I do that too but I do tend to just keep them in these boxes they fit in my Alex drawers really nicely from Ikea and that's just the way I go so that works for me now let's talk about their numbering system because a few of you have had some difficulties with their numbering system so Copic have a very straightforward numbering system um, let's talk about the old new numbering system. Okay, so let's open these up. So I'm going to go through some of the letters that are on their pens. So we have Y, that's yellow. We have G for green. TG is a toner gray. Um, we have uh, Y's, R's are reds. B's are blues. Um, then we have, what else do we have in here? We have WGs, which are warm greys, Cs, which are cool greys, and then we have S, which is black. Um, so I think that pretty much covers all of the colours in there. Then you kind of move into the numbers themselves. So if I, for instance, pick out a set of numbers in here, so I'm going to pick out my R3s. So I'm going to pick out all of these R3s. An R3 in this one. Uh... Now the only confusing part you will find is that purples also come under R's, as do some blues. Um, I don't know whether that's something to do with the colour mixing, um, but that's just how it kind of happens. But general rule of thumb is your B's are your blues, R's are your reds, you're going to find that that's a more ready colour. Um, your G's, your greens, your yellow, buys your yellows, etc. So if I start with a 301, then we move into a 302, and we move into a 304, then we move into a 318. And then we move into a 335. So you can see pretty much as you move through your threes, the higher the number, the kind of darker and the more intense your shade is. And that's kind of how the numbering system works. I haven't managed to work out anything more in depth or anything more than that for you. The other thing that you'll find will really help, as I say, is print out this um, chart. This does tell you by set how they all work out. But if you look at them, it does group some nice color families. You can see that this is your red sunset tree, um, ink cube set. So you know those nice red sunset, um, which is our layering inks. You'll see that there are four um, alcohol markers that go with that trio. So a quad even, I'm used to saying trio. So because when we do Copics, we do trios. But this kind of goes with that quad, you've got your glacier caves. So that will give you a really nice idea of the four you would want to use together if you are coloring something in. So let's, for instance, do the seashore down here. So we can take this one here. Uh, so this would be in our set D, which I think is this one. So it would be B802, it would be B15 and 14 and the 635. So we'll do a little bit of colouring. Now I should mention the alcohol markers themselves. You get a brush tip and you get a bullet nib. The bullet nib has the grey line so you always know which end you want to take off 
and you can color with whichever one you like. I know some people like a bullet nib, some people like a brush nib. I mean, it really is personal preference. One thing as always, color on some printer paper. You're gonna get a much, much better effect coloring on printer paper than if you color just directly onto your cardstock and onto then a non-porous surface. It stops bleeding. Now I'm just gonna grab out my heat tool. I wanna to make sure my ink's completely dry. If you were to leave it five to 10 minutes, it's gonna be dry, but we're doing a video, so we don't have five to 10 minutes to just sit around and chat to make sure it's dry. So we'll just make sure it's completely dry with our heat tool, like so. And I'm just gonna color a couple of petals. I mean, I've done tons of videos on different ways to blend, and I have my three top tips, which is exactly what I'm gonna be using here. So, foundation, we go in with our lightest shade, just like this. This is a nice, pretty succulent color here. Now, I know I'll alt and you do do a black ink. You can absolutely use that, and we can add a link for it in the description for you. But honestly, my amalgam for me is my absolute favorite ink. And if you have a large stamp that you have issues stamping, you can use our conditioning tip as well. We have a video on how to do that. I'll put that in the top right-hand corner for you. You can click on that and hop on over. So, a nice strong foundation with your lightest colour. And what a strong foundation looks like, it means I can see that shape on the reverse side of my cardstock. Then I'm going to go to my mid shade and I'm going to add some shading. Now the reason somebody asked me about um, what do all these letters and everything means is because if you are familiar with the Copic system, they have a very regimented number letter system. You can absolutely work out the saturation, color, hue, everything from the letters and numbers. Many other manufacturers don't do that. Um, but from this, you can really get a good idea. And as I say, if you print out that uh, guide, I mean, I don't think you can go far wrong. Now I'm going back to my lightest shade and I've just blended out that shading. And now I'm gonna to get to my next shade. So this is my third shade in, and I'm gonna add a little bit less shading, but I just want to make sure I have some nice coloring in here. And then I go back to my next shade down, I blend. And then again, I go back to my lightest shade. Then we're gonna to go to our darkest shade. So this is the fourth shade. And again, I'm gonna add the least amount of shading. The other thing is you can let the stamp guide you. So here, this is telling me where those thick dark lines are, it's telling me that's where you want the most of your shading. And then again, we just go back through all of those colors. And this is how you get that perfect, perfect blend. So I've now got some really nice kind of lights, dark shades, everything like that with my alt and new markers. So I've got some real nice kind of curve in that leaf by using those lights and darks. Now, the other thing I want to point out is the blender. And I did say I was gonna have a little bit of a rant about the blender. I always do. If you haven't seen one of my previous alcoholic marker videos, the blender pen is not a blender. So the blender pen, if I put this over the top, and I will do it in a second just to kind of prove the point. Let me color in a second leaf, just so you have a comparison. So again, I'm just gonna do a very quick color. Uh, foundation, strong foundation color. And you want it to be a nice, even base coat. And I know some of you kind of commented that this can be a little bit more time consuming and thing, but this is really how you're gonna get those nice, seamless blends. And it's how you're gonna add those perfect base colors. And 
you could do more than one petal at a time. I mean, I was only intending to do one, but I wanted to give you a comparison as to what a blender pen does. Because a blender pen really does make a difference. And I really wish they wouldn't call it a blender pen. So again, I'm just adding some nice light and dark. Okay, so we have two nicely colored leaves there. So this is our blender pen. Blender pens are colorless. It just looks like there's nothing on my marker. It is so wet. So a blender pen is actually an ink bleacher. An ink, a blender pen removes ink. So if I now go over this second leaf that I colored, thinking, oh, this is gonna blend my ink. This is what it's gonna do. Can you see that this color of that leaf is now getting a lot lighter? And you can see my blender pen has actually picked up color. So what I could do now is I could go to my next leaf and I could lay down some of that color. The other thing you can do with a blender pen is you can do the tip to tip method. So I can lay down some color onto my blender tip. And if I want to add veining to something, you can see there, and it does this really nice fade out. So it goes from really dark to really light, and I get some really pretty fade out. And if I want to get rid of that color, I just scribble off to the side, my blender pen will go back to white, super simple. But what a blender pen is really, really great for is if, say here, where I made this tiny little mistake, and we'll show you a close-up of me doing it as well, but I made a tiny mistake. All I do is I take my blender pen and I push that ink back in. Because it's a bleaching pen, it's gonna help me fix that mistake. So what I can do, and what I suggest you do is do it a couple of times, let it dry. If that mistake's not fixed, go back and do it again. And that will stop, some of you asked me about blender pens kind of allowing more bleeds to come out. That's probably because you oversaturated it on the outside and it allows that ink to bleed back out. So do it a few times, push the ink in, let it dry. If it doesn't fix it the first time, give it maybe three or four more pushes. If that doesn't work, three or four more pushes. So keep doing it that way. But that's what a blender pen is for. It doesn't blend, it bleaches, it removes ink. So they are my top tips. That's kind of how the alter new numbering system works. I hope that works for you and gives you a little bit more of an idea. Let's say, do go and get those downloads off the alter new website. Check out the links in the video description too. We've got all of those linked up for you as well. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and of course, hit that join button to become a Perks member and save lots of money on all of your crafty purchases because Ellen Hudson stocks all of these things and you can save tons of money over there as well. And give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. I have no idea how much it helps us. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you again tomorrow with maybe a tip, trick, tutorial, or something a little bit different. You never know what you're gonna get. So I will see you again very soon. Happy crafting, everyone. Bye.